Welcome everybody to danandmatt.com. Today we're doing the first in a series of 10 workshops. And our topic today is the relationship between sales and marketing. And it's interesting, Matt, that often I'll hear people speak about sales and or marketing. And the funny thing is they use the words and they interchange them where it's almost as though in their minds it's the same thing. And, of course, this isn't the case. Sales and marketing are definitely related, and we'll cover that off in a moment, but they're clearly not the same thing. And I think uh, that it's not surprising, in fact, let me say right up front, that many of the businesses that I know that I deal with and having spoken to you, you deal with, that are in trouble, uh, it's interesting that in those businesses, they really don't know the difference between the two. So perhaps... One of the real uh, objectives of this session is to point out the differences between the two and why both are so vitally important for the long-term success of any business. Well, it's interesting you say that, Daniel, because, I mean, there's a common statistic that says that, you know, 80% of startups fail within the first five years. Now, these are plumbers, electricians, doctors, even lawyers that are struggling to run their businesses, and it's clearly not because of their practical skills. I mean, these people have spent you know, three, five years learning their practical skill and probably at least that again, you know, creating the practical experiences and probably tens of thousands of dollars on learning these skills, yet they're collapsing as soon as they go into business for themselves. And it has to be something outside that skill set that's causing it and potentially it would be within that sales and marketing. It's the weakness there. Yeah, look, you're absolutely right. I mean, in terms of uh, just recapping what you've said, that functional skill that, you know, you've mentioned plumbers and lawyers and basically any profession, they are good at what they do. So there's a real gap between the functional skill at being good at what they do and the fact that their business has failed. There's, a, there's an obvious skill gap there. And what it is, is not so much the functional skill, but the sales and marketing skill where quite often, and I'm sure you've, you've seen it yourself in your consultancy, that uh, you've got biz people who used to work for someone else where the business was actually developed for them and all they really had to do was deliver the service. But when they start up their own business, all of a sudden they have to generate that business for themselves, i.e. the sales and marketing, which they really have no idea how to do it. And that's really the root cause of why so many of these businesses go out of business within five years. Look, I mean, for me, I try to use a neurosurgery example. I mean, if you can imagine a neurosurgeon going into a surgery with no experience, no training, no processes and no systems, and then expecting to be able to know what to do. I mean, they're going to have so many issues and things are going to go wrong. And when it's a sales scenario, the same things go wrong. So you need to have systems, you need to have processes and formulas that you use and you use consistently over time so you can perfect them before you can be expected to have a stable and long-serving business. Now, Daniel, what sort of strategies um, or what, what way can you differentiate the difference between sales and marketing for our listeners at home? Yeah, again, a great question. And I guess if you go to... Uh, the textbook, and, you know, we look at a Philip Kotler or one of the great marketers in the world, they would say to you, okay, uh, selling is a subset of marketing specifically, and we know about the four P's of marketing. And, in fact, if we bring the graphic up now to talk about the four P's of marketing, which is sometimes called the marketing mix, and we'll see it behind us now, the four P's of marketing are product, which incorporates the good and or service. Promotion, which is how we let people know about it. Price, which is the cost of the product. And place, which is how we get the product to the target market, to the audience. All of those things make up the marketing mix. And if we, if we did have... Uh, one of the great luminaries here, like a cobbler or a drucker, they would say that selling comes off the back 
of one of those Ps, specifically promotion. Okay, so if we were to pull up just the, the promotion element, um, what would we see in it? Yeah, that there are various aspects to promotion. The ones that probably our audience are most familiar with, obviously advertising is at the top of that tree. Advertising is when we send a one, one directional message via either electronic or uh, print media out to our target audience. So we could be talking about radio, television, uh, cable TV. In terms of print media, we could be talking about newspapers, magazines, etc. And as I say, it is one directional. Advertising works when it sends out a simple message one directionally to the audience. The issue with advertising, of course, is that it doesn't engage the audience the way other forms of promotion do. The second major type is sales promotion. Now, sales promotion is anything that stimulates demand. For example, if uh, you're selling um, a kilo of laundry detergent and all of a sudden you make the box a little bit bigger and it's 1.2 kilos of laundry detergent, then that's an example of a sales promotion. So you'd also see things potentially like uh, when we go shopping and we see discount vouchers on the back of our receipts or um, we always, well, we know we always can open up a mailbox and get some discount vouchers or some go to this store now and buy one, get one free. Does that all fit underneath that category yeah, of sales promotion? Absolutely. And the, the, the common thread that runs through all sales promotion is that it's there to stimulate instant spikes in demand. So it's something that you do occasionally, but you can't do it constantly, or what you end up doing is cheapening the brand. So it's something that works in pulses, and typically it's used when the demand for a product would typically decline. So for example, if you're selling electric blankets, you know that you're not going to sell as many in summer as you will in winter. So typically retailers might say, okay, buy an electric blanket now and get 30% off. And a lot of savvy buyers will say, sure, I'll buy it now and in a few months I'm going to need it anyway. So it's a win-win. Okay, so that's very similar to, I guess, the Australian Boxing Day sales or the Americans, I think they have one after um, a public like, holiday as well, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the Labor Day. The Labor Day holiday. Yeah, yeah. okay. That and uh, Yeah, so that's a great example. And the third type of um, uh, promotion is publicity or public relations. Now, public relations, Matt, is intriguing because unlike the other forms of promotion, we can't actually control it. If someone reviews your restaurant, good, bad or indifferent, you have you have the review and you've got to live with it. So we don't have control over it, but it's free. So on the one hand, it's good because it's cost effective in the sense that it really doesn't cost you much. Uh, on the other hand, you don't have the control over it. However, the great thing about publicity is that it has a much higher level of uh, acceptability within the community because if someone is reviewing you who's independent, then they have a greater degree of autonomy and independence and people are much more likely to believe an independent review than they are to believe uh, an ad that you put in the local paper. Okay, so what you're saying then is it's very, very important uh, what your reviews are on things like Yelp and uh, Google websites because... That's real people trying out real services and real products and saying, I loved it, I hated it, this I'll never try again, don't go and order it, or you have to have this product, or you have to love this coffee, go and eat it or drink it now. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's absolutely true, and that's a fantastic segue, let me add, to social media, which of course is the fourth major arm of promotion. And social media, again, is fascinating because... Had we have had this discussion 10 years ago, we, no one would have known what we were talking about, despite the fact that uh, YouTube and a couple of the others have been around for about 10 years. Um, and social media is unique in that it is really one of the key uh, modalities that engage people. And it's about two-way communication 
where unlike advertising where we're just sending a one-way message with social media we engage with two-way communication which empowers the target audience to talk to us to let us know what they like what they don't like and it's absolutely no surprise at all that it's taken off in such a, a major way well daniel I'm, i mean i'm a let's say i'm a successful business person or, or a struggling business person and i'm an electrician in a in a local area i mean is social media something i really have to worry about or uh, is, is it something that you know it, that's for the big businesses uh look unequivocally and i try not to make too many unequivocal statements but unequivocally yes the time to wait and see with social media is genuinely past. I think the fact that, ironically, the fact that younger people discovered it early is quite ironic because a lot of business people didn't take it seriously initially because they literally saw their teenage children using it and they thought it was a bit of a gimmick. Quite the opposite, Matt. It is a powerful, focused and enduring uh, tool that uh, we will discuss in full in later instalments. Suffice to say, if you haven't started social media, you really need to get on with it now. It's funny, I actually, I thought uh, social media was a bit of a gimmick as well. And then I started to hop online when I was looking for an electrician and I ended up hiring an electrician solely based on the reviews of a bunch of people in my area. I've actually got a client uh, who was an electrician out in the Lilydale area, which is an area in Victoria, and he didn't understand why his business was getting so many customers all of a sudden. It just took off what he thought was out of nowhere. And what he found out was a couple of his clients had put some rave reviews about him on Google. And all of a sudden, there were you know corporate organizations, franchises that had paid a fortune for their franchises that couldn't go near this guy because he was getting so many clients just based on these reviews. So social media can be incredibly powerful. Now, obviously today and for this um, video series, we're not going to be covering off on the finites of advertising, uh, social media and um, publicity, but uh, we'll be covering it in, in some of our other things that we, uh, that we do in the future. But um, what I think for, for this purpose is we really need to, to stop for a second and look at what the differences are between sales and marketing so the viewers at home can really start to understand and uh, I guess start to apply into their business, first understand what the difference is and then obviously put those in action in their business. And that's the important thing, Daniel. I mean, we found that there really was no one in the process that would take you through all the steps. Some people would take you through and explain to you why marketing was so important and to make sure that you were targeting the right customers. And then there were other people that would take you through and say, once you've got customers approaching you, how you'd sell to those. But there was really no one that would hold your hand and take you through the entire thing. And that's why this video series is so exciting because it starts at A and goes right through to Z, really shows you everything you need to make sure that your product is not only targeting the right demographic, positioned right in the demographic, but also tells you how to sell to that demographic every time.
And that's why I'm so excited, Daniel, because the content we're giving over the, the coming series is so important to businesses so they don't have to become a business statistic. I mean, that 80% failure rate within uh, startups within five years is just horrifying for anyone that is about to get into business or that is in business already. So the models that we cover off on really help people work out how they're going to apply our concepts to their business and start getting the results they need, not only to survive, but get that quality of life back that they so rightly deserve for being brave enough to go into business for themselves. So that's all we have time for today, but thank you very much for joining us. Feel free to hop on our website to see what upcoming seminars that we have in your local area. Thanks again. Today we shared with you some fantastic concepts and ideologies to help you and your business. These are the same strategies that we have used to build businesses into the multi-million dollars within such a short period of time. We've also helped other clients build thousands of customers within just periods of two to three years. These same concepts have also been used to help national and multinational corporations improve their bottom lines and their acquisition strategy time and time again. Mm. Now, despite that, the caveat that we very much want to give you is that obviously we don't know the subtleties and the eccentricities of your respective businesses. So as is always the case, always seek professional advice before starting a program of your own. Now, obviously, you can go and see a professional sales and marketing coach or hop on danandmat.com. We have seminars that we hold all year round. Hop on there and see if there's one in your local area. We would love to help you tailor the most successful sales and marketing program to help you build your business to success.